Uh, we've got three presenters, and I'm going to introduce them all right now. And, uh, but they're going to come up individually. I don't know how this is going to work. He didn't, wasn't going to tell me. By the way, I'm going to put this on B. I think I hit B. Where's B? There. So I don't know how this is going to work, but we're sure going to find out. Uh, first on the stage will be Ruben Gallegos. He is from the Sarah Club of Brownsville, Texas, and he is the president of Sarah International. We've got the top dog here, folks, so listen up. Also, also, by the way, where is Ruben? Is he here? Oh, here he is. Okay. Also, we're going to have following him will be Colonel John Halloran. The colonel is from the Sarah Club of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and he is the U.S. Council's Vice President of Membership. Also, last but not least, as you all know, not least, is Greg Schweitz. Greg Schweitz is from the Sarah Club of Omaha. He is the past president of the U.S. Council, and he currently sits on the SI board as Vice President of Communications. So with that, Ruben, why don't you kick us off? He, he said, good luck. I don't know why would you say, uh, why would you say good luck? I had to follow another Judy, man. I, it, this, is, this is tough to get up here. Anyway, uh, the, uh, in your program, it says, uh, Dr. Ruben Gallegos, well, I'm, I'm a retired university professor at the University of Texas at Brownsville. I already have my cough drop, and I didn't bring my faded notes, as most professors do. But I, we're the ones that give Sarah the international part. And I want to really introduce some people who have worked real hard before I got here. One of them, one of them is Mario Biscarde, past president. Mario, stand up. Think about Canada. We also have a, the president elect, Mike Bragg. Where's Mike? Skip? Okay, he's an attorney. <laughs> and, and, then, and then we have the president elect elect, Greg Schweitz. Greg? Greg and I worked real hard when we were uh, members of the audit committee for Sarah International. And talk about fun. We really had fun. I really enjoyed working on that. Uh, I want to introduce to you Giuseppe Micoli from Italy. Giuseppe. Uh, will the rest of the members of the board and executive committee please stand up? are here. Please stand up. Yeah. My last name is, well, I'm from the foreign state of Texas. You didn't know that, so we're different. Greg, one time he says, uh, Ruben, I'm going to drop by and visit with you. I'm here to visit Dallas, so since I'm in Dallas, I'll drop by and visit you. 550 miles away from <laughs> I'm, I'm from the border and by the sea. And the last name is Gallegos. I already told Dick over here that that double L in Spanish is a Y. So it is Gallegos. Can you say that? Gallegos. Oh, very good. I certify you as bilingual now. <laughs> A long time ago, a long time ago when I started, nearly 30 years ago in Sarah International, uh, Catholic Church I started a long time ago as, a, as an altar boy. So was, I went to one of the district conventions, I mean regional conventions, and this speaker, we've had fantastic speakers, by the way, and, and I compliment you guys for bringing such beautiful 
uh, people, speakers. They're great. This is what he said. Yes, we have a shortage of priests. And yes, we do. But you know what he said? What we really have a shortage of is Catholics praying for vocations. We do not have enough Catholics praying for vocations. The membership part of, uh, of what I came up with is a byproduct. I want, by the end of my term, and I've already been in it seven months, I want more Catholics praying for vocations. Number one, we have to pray more ourselves. I have a card that says Sarah Prayer for Vocations and Sarah Preference for Vocations, but I asked uh, Maury, where's Maury? Maury, stand up. Stand up, Maury. He came up with a pamphlet so we can pray for vocations every day, a different prayer. Now, don't give up your cards that you have where you can pray for vocations every day like we do. But now you have a pamphlet. Uh, we also pray once a month the rosary, but we had to pray that every day. We got to pray the rosary every day for vocations. There are only 12,000 of us, Sarans. Only. Only. In 2004, there were 20,000 of us. 20,000. It's not right. So, what do we have to do? There are point, point one, one billion point two, one point two billion. If you haven't seen the movie The Two Popes, it tells you that we have one point two billion Catholics, and there are only twelve of us, twelve thousand. It's not right. So, what do we need? We need a bridge between us and 1.2 billion Catholics. So, came up with the idea of calling it Missionaries of St. Junipero Serra. That's the bridge. But you're going to hear from Greg and John. They are the bridge builders. As a university professor, I used to teach teachers how to be administrators. Now, what, one of my favorite pies is pecan pie. I'm from Texas. So it's a very simple thing. Number one, the acronym for pie simply means plan. So as you sit here, we sit here listening to fantastic speakers Start developing a plan. And it fits. It fits. Number two, this is where we have a tremendous, serious challenge. Implementation. All these years, I've been coming here since 2010 to meetings like this one. And I want to thank Homer Redford. Where's Homer? There's Homer and Katie. I met them in Chicago, 2010. Look around yourselves here. I felt very lonely. Felt very lonely. I'm doing fine when I'm in Texas. I'm doing fine when I'm in District 126. But I went to Chicago. And it was a lonely place for me. Homer and Katie came to me and invited me to go have, I'll never forget it, Italian food. And I don't like Italian food, by the way. <laughs> but since you invited me, I went. Not only did I get some Italian food, but Homer is a fantastic singer, man. He can sing. 
they just sang, he just sang a song to, well, Katie did too. Beautiful, still. And I appreciate that. Because 2010 would have been my last year going to Chicago, man. Number one, it was doggone cold. And, and, and I'm, I'm not nervous. I'm just cold here. Uh, where I'm coming from, a cold front is below 70. <laughs> and and, and uh, it's just not right for me to be away from that, man. So I want to thank you, Homer. I want to thank you, Mori. Mori. Uh, this is it. Number one, we personally have to pray more. And that's what I'm pleading for. Let's pray more for vocations. Number two, like the rosary that Tim O'Neill leads us every month. Let's pray more rosaries. And let's invite people to pray rosary with us. That's a beautiful thing about the Catholic Church. We don't have to do it all by ourselves. We don't have to do it all by ourselves. I pray the rosary, but when I pray the rosary with other Catholics, it's even better. It's even better. Number three, invite Catholics to our meetings. We do fantastic work. We really do. But we only know it ourselves. We need to invite Catholics to come to our meetings. And then, of course, we need to invite them to come to become members. But that's the last thing, the last step. One, pray more. Two, invite people to pray with you. And three, invite Catholics to come to our meetings. Four, invite them to be members. It's not, it's, not, it's not an easy type of steps to follow. It's not easy. Leave your comfort zone of the meetings and get out. You know, every, every two or three weeks, I get people who come to my door of my house. They ring the bell. And they want to talk to me about their religion. I have a rosary by the front door. And I said, and I tell them, you really interrupted me? I was praying the rosary. <laughs> if, if, I give you, if I give you 15 minutes, will you come and help me finish my rosary? They will not come in. Not only that, but they will not Talk to me at all. I don't know. There's something about the rosary that they don't like. Get out there with the rosary. See, I was praying the rosary. They leave, man. I have yet. I've lived there for about 20 years where I live now. And, and, and I've never had a Catholic ring my door. I'm not asking you to do that. <laughs> to go to ring on doors, you know. What I'm asking is what we just heard a few minutes ago. Our territory is 1.2 billion Catholics. And the churches are close to us. We don't have to go like St. Junipero Saruman. He came, he came from Spain on a ship. And it wasn't. Dick has already seen his, clock, his watch twice. So I'm, I'm ready to stop, Dick. Okay. <laughs> The moment you do the third time, have you done it? No, okay. He's ready. <laughs> he's ready. So, 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 so here he comes all the way from, he's a university professor. I'll never understand because I would have done that myself, a university professor myself. He's a university professor. He is teaching seminarians, has a fantastic job, gets on a ship, and it wasn't Carnival Cruise, and comes all the way, gets involved in a storm, you know, has to stop before he gets to Mexico. Finally gets to Mexico in Veracruz. Walks from Veracruz to Mexico City. Mexico City. Then he walks from there to Cuernavaca. From Cuernavaca, he walks to California. When was the last time you walked to a church to talk to the priest? about Sarah International. 
When was the last time that you invited a guest to your club? This is what I've done. If I'm going to promote missionary, I have been twice to Mexico. I was there in June, and then I was there in October. I've been to Brazil. From here, I go to Paraguay. I've been to, to Nashville. I've been to Victoria. And I will continue to go and be a missionary. We are Sarah International. And I really would appreciate if you would do that too. Just go to a church and talk about Sarah International. Is that the third time? Thank you very much. <laughs> to follow. They told me I had 25 minutes and now I got five minutes left. I'm not sure how I'm going to put it all in, in five minutes. But for those that have been on my conference calls, and I know some of you are out there and I do greatly appreciate that, I developed a membership prayer. And I'd like to start off with that membership prayer because it's actually threefold. And I'll explain it after I'm done. So in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. My Lord and my God, we ask for an increase of laborers in our clubs so that we can continue the programs that promote and foster vocations. May the members of our clubs feel needed by keeping them involved and interested. Let us not waste their time, talents, and treasures that many so graciously give to our clubs and to Sarah. Most importantly, may we not forget to thank our members so that they know that they are, their efforts are making a positive difference in the lives of others. In God's name we pray, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. It's threefold. We're asking for new members. We're also asking for those members that we do get, that you retain them by putting them to work. And most of all, even though we're not here for recognition, it is always nice to be recognized for the time, talents, and treasures that we do give that is making that difference, and to, as said, thank them. Now we're into the exercise portion of this program. Okay? Now, first of all, I would like to ask all club membership VPs that are here to please stand up. All club membership VPs. Okay. Now I would like to, yes, you can clap for them. Now I would like to ask all those that are on their club membership recruiting team to please stand. Every single one of you should be standing. You're all on the membership recruiting team. Now give yourselves a hand. All right. Thank you. Sit down. Sit down. Holy cow. Now we know what work we got to do. Uh, yes, we know what's wrong. All right. Um, how many of you all are married and your spouse is also Catholic? Raise your hands. Okay. Now, how many of you all are married and your spouse is Catholic and you're all in Sarah? Well, some of the hands dropped. You got some potential members right out there. Low-hanging fruit. The family. Bring them in. All right. So how many get the Sarah magazine? How many read it? Oh, look, at some of the hands are going down. <laughs> That's not good. All right. I should let you know that I am a graduate of Mark Bakowitz School of Enthusiasm. <laughs> but I'm st I, haven't, I haven't got my degree yet because I'm still doing this as a thesis. All right. Now, in those magazines, I know for committee to vice presidents and such, we're required to do one article a year for Sarah. I have now done seven articles. Every time the Sarah magazine has come out, I've done a, a membership article. And I don't have time be, uh, to go into them all, but um, I hope you, if you have not read them, to go back and review them. It has some great ideas for recruiting and retention and such, and uh, ideas to help grow your membership so that you can be recognized for the membership initiative that is currently going on. But the last one that I did was, does Sarah need a membership slogan to promote recruiting? Well, I know one person read it because she actually sent me a slogan. 
And so I don't know if Kathy Roggenbuck is here, but she is the president of Watertown Area, South Dakota. And her thing was, and I thought this was a great one, and where's Kathy? Kathy, thank you very much for reading the article. I am glad you're here. See, you didn't know I was going to recognize you, did you? All right, so as I said, she's the author of this. She came in parentheses, vocations hyphen, we're on it. And then she puts the rest of it is, join the movement, join Sarah. That's a great first start for her slogan. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Now, even though we've got this thing going on, we do encourage you, it's a great time to finish off the initiative, do a spring membership recruiting drive. You've got now to plan for it, do it in March, April, whether you do wine and cheese, whether you do orange juice and donuts outside the church, whether you pass cards around in the church to get recommended names and give it to your membership uh, committee and whatever. There is a whole bunch of different ways that you can do a membership recruiting drive and this would help you finish off because every single club here and all our clubs out there should at least make the minimum of five new members and get a discount when next time you have to pay your Sarah dues. And what can you do with one to five or six or hundred dollars? My case, it's almost 700 because of my club size. That's great money for vocations. So consider that. Also, uh, when I first took over in January 18, and, and as I said, if Greg comes up to you and asks you something, go the other way real quick because he's gonna corner you. And he did that to me. But in January 2018, we had 7,663 members. Uh, we just finished up January 2020 with 7,536. So uh, we had a low of 127. Uh, we lost 127 from in, in a two-year period. Now, the good news, even though we lost that 127, it was actually more than that. But in the last couple of months, you all have been doing such a great job recruiting. We're now up to plus 70, 71. So it shouldn't be hard in the next couple of months to get rid of that minus 127 and put us in the plus after a two-year period. We've been as high as 6, 7,698, and we've been as low as 7,465. So I want to finish up so that uh, Greg can come up here and then turn it over to Maury. But I do have some stats for you. If you're in the South Central, uh, in a two-year period, you gained 117 members. Thank you very much. And you have seven clubs in, in uh, potential formation. Southeast had a plus 52 in two years with seven clubs in formation. Central, plus 38, nine clubs in formation. Great Lakes, plus 35, two clubs in formation. Rocky Mountain only lost six in the two-year period uh, with one club in formation. North Central lost 45, five clubs in formation. Pacific Northwest has lost 75, four clubs in formation. Northeast has lost 94, five clubs in formation. Pacific has lost 139, two clubs in formation. As you can see, it depends on your area. Some of the regions are doing well and others are now starting to recover and that's a good sign. So we're looking for great things in the last uh, four or five months of this membership initiative. But just remember that membership can't stand alone. If you don't have good communications in your clubs, if you don't have good programs in your clubs, if you don't have good vocations in your clubs, getting members is not going to do you a whole hell of a lot of good because you're going out the back door almost as soon as you bring them in. So membership is only one leg of a four-legged stool. And, of course, um, don't forget, you are a recruiter. And the best way to recruit if you don't believe in the program, you wouldn't be here. So the best way to recruit is show your enthusiasm and ask another person to be a member of your Sarah Club. And with that, I'd like to say take care and God bless and thank you for letting me have the opportunity to be your membership vice president for the council. <laughs>
we talked about numbers before earlier in some of these presentations. It's about commitment. And so part of the commitment is we have to we have to look in our own re in our own research or if you will in our own searching for members we want to look for potential members that have three elements to them first one is talent so as you're recruiting to your clubs how many have and you don't have to raise your hands but how many have found themselves in their clubs where you just don't have enough leaders to replace the current ones that you've got or you're missing missing a particular um, talent, if you will, and say uh, communication. So you, you don't have that, or you just don't have enough people that will really take up the, the torch, so to speak, and keep it going. You know, it's, uh, God has, as he said earlier this morning, you know, we all have a, we're all part of a big plan. And so part of us being to, in Sarah, as we've answered that question, yes, and generally it's a person asking us to consider it. Everybody here was asked by someone. Typically, it's a friend or somebody that knew you, and they knew about your commitment to your faith, and they also knew about your potential to contribute to a club. All right, so the importance of having talent in your club is really what I'm trying to underscore here. As you look for new members, look for the best possible people you can find. The best possible people you can find, and don't presume that they're going to say no. It's an honor to be asked to be a part of a Sarah club. And many times, oh, it's just our club or it's just, you know, shucks. No, it's a big deal. So, Sarans, if you haven't heard it, we'll repeat it a hundred times, but every one of the speakers, how many times do they have to thank you for the good work that you're doing before you finally understand and really believe them? No, it's important, it's relevant to this church, our, our organization, and our mission. So find people and ask the best possible people you can find to be part of your Sarah Club. Because if you're just going to, you can't, it's just not a random choice. You want to pick the best people you can. The second thing is time. So we've got the best person possible, but that best person possible doesn't have the time. Now, everybody's busy. It's a matter of allocation of time in many cases, but sometimes there's just a practical complication that you just can't get that particular person at this moment. So recruiting is a long-term game. Okay, you're, you're looking, you're watching, you're looking for opportunities, and maybe it takes a couple of times to invite somebody to a club meeting or to a particular event. And then if you get a yes and you get the best person possible, they've got the best talent in the, in the world, but they never show up, doesn't help. So part of this we, with the understanding, okay, with some flexibility, but basically you have to work along with their speed, find out the best people you possibly can, and then you have to get people that have the time to commit to this in some way, in some manner. So, talent and time. The third thing is the easiest to solve, treasure. So sometimes there's a financial limitation on a particular individual because of their work environment, their conditions, their families, this and that. And believe me, as a club, you can solve that problem. You can solve that problem. Because it really doesn't take that much money to be part of Sarah, but sometimes there's situations. But as Judy described, many times we don't, uh, describe properly why it takes a little bit of money invest, to invest in the big picture of vocations. So time becomes an element. Treasure becomes a, the, a lease. So talent, time, and treasure are the things that you want to work with. So be intentional in your, in your invitations. As, uh, as John mentioned to you, everybody's on the recruiting team. And I want to tell you that this missionaries program that Ruben uh, kicked off this year has been a, a great opportunity for many clubs to start uh, focusing on an important element. Uh, many times we forget, and many clubs forget, that recruiting becomes a part of, part of the, uh, the ongoing operations of a club. 
And so we get a little bit complacent about who we've got, where we're at. And, you know, honestly, sometimes it's just easy not to ask anybody because we're kind of content. But if you're not actively engaged in recruiting, your, your club is going to slip away. Sometimes they slip away until they can't be recovered. But um, I want to just tell you that I think it's important that you're here today. You're the, the vanguard of it. It's not everybody. It's not a numbers game. It's a quality game. So we're looking for people, the best possible people, to be part of Sarah. And then think about yourselves as leaders in vocations work. Not, not everybody can do the work of a Sarah. Not everybody's called to it, but everybody can do the work of promoting and, and affirming our vocations. That's our baptismal call. And so sometimes Sarahs have to look at themselves as leaders in that work. We don't do it all. We can't do it all. But we certainly can lead it. That's where we're at. Okay, thank you. Thank you.